YouTube is pretty funny by asking you to pay some money to promote a video. Now, if you had 600 subscribers, 100 subscribers, 100 subscribers, if each one of your 100 people watched your video and told one person to watch your video, that's 200. If they told somebody else to tell somebody else to watch the video, and each one of them did it, that'd be 300. YouTube is so small that they put our videos in a place to where they won't be watched. And I'm going to honestly tell you that videos that I watch and that the people who I watch produce, those videos that these people put out are the best videos on YouTube. And none of us was represented at Xbox Live in San Francisco. They... They had Tanya TKO there, but I didn't see her do anything on stage in the show. Um, it's sad that all of us who speak on kindness and unity have no place on YouTube. Um, I can talk about hating people and being mad and angry and shit and get video views. I talk about unity. I don't get no love. Um, I can grab a beer and act a fool and shit and get some love. Um, but I can't be positive and get any love. The problem with YouTube is just that um, people are on YouTube to learn. Some people are here to learn about other people. Um, we spoke on white people last week on YouTube. White people don't do this and white people don't do that on YouTube. But I've encountered white people on YouTube and, you know, Father Justin, he's been kicked off for hate speech and shit, you know, before. Um, I've never heard him say anything for hateful. But I can go to other people's channels and shit and see swastikas and this and that. And blatant promotion of separatism amongst the races and hate and these people flourish um, we don't run into these people that much unless we're looking for them now the black on black drama why black men and black women don't get along and all that crap um, it's pitiful I'm just going to mention on that briefly because you see a lot of that shit. Um, I talk against that shit, but uh, I'm all also grouped into that. In other words, they'll put me in a group with a bunch of people who talk like that on a regular, and I don't talk like that on a regular. If I got something negative to say about black people, I'll say it, but then I'll back it up with a reason. You know. I truly think half the bullshit that's perpetuated upon black people the way they carry themselves is a taught mentality. In other words, we have been kept in captivity for a long time. A lot of that shit has trickled down fucking ideology. Um, the hatred that some black people have towards white people is spawned basically and only and solely based upon actions and deeds done to these black people by white people. In other words, if white people were doing all the shit that they were doing, black people would not have been able to see it in order for it to observe into their well-being. In other words, if you wasn't riding around with sheets lynching people, people would never remember that. Uh, we live in a day and age now where um, without the black vote, Barack Obama still would have become president of the United States of America based on the white people who voted for him alone. And think about it. For a group of people to dislike a whole group of people for whatever reasons, um, you need to understand the situation. White people hate black people. Black people dislike white people. Not all black people hate white people. Not all white people hate black people. Those who do have hate for the other race perpetuate this hate and it all stems from one group of people's actions against another group of people. In other words, I'm not just bashing white people in that statement, but if you look at the big picture, I'm sorry, I'm erasing something right now. If you look at the big picture, all that drama and the hate perpetuated 
by the quote unquote masters have brought us to this date. So why do you say why black people dislike white people because of that? There's an animosity there because of the past. That animosity will not go away as long as white people think they're being cheated, robbed, raped, murdered, and killed by every black person that they see walk down the street. Not every black person you see walk down the street is a criminal. Not every white person you see walking the streets of America is a bloody racist. So when you look at the picture, those people who perpetuate the stereotypes control us by these stereotypes. The fact that we have a president of color means nothing because he does not dwell in the communities in which the quote-unquote black bad, bad blacks are from. There's bad blacks, there's bad Mexicans, there's bad whites, there's bad Asians, there's bad of all races, colors, and creeds. But when you look at the United States of America, there's only two races that stick out. That's the whites and the blacks. Our drama has been legendary throughout the history of time. And it's all thanks to the Pope. Back in the day, I don't want to go there, but hey, that's how it is. And that leads us to the big news in the Bay Area. And I'm tired of saying it. They're showing it over and over and over again. And if you want to put a racial spin on it, this is the spin. The white cops felt as if they were outnumbered in the BART station by young people. Not black people, not Mexicans, not whites, by young people. Young people in general do not have the basic skills to deal in stressful situations. In other words, you see some action over there going down. Young people will gather around and root and cheer. Instead of saying, hey, y'all be quiet, calm down. No, everybody, they'll egg one person on or another side on. Young people do this. Young whites and blacks do this. So let me get on back to my point. This young black kid was killed at the BART station. You can clearly see two white cops holding him down, and you see the other cop pull his gun out and shoot the kid while he's laying on the ground. Period. Is that a racist moment? Did these, quote me if you want to, white people feel afraid for their lives? And that's why they shot the little black kid in the back while he's laying on the ground with officers holding him down. I've never seen anybody held down and shot before, but I've seen it 25 times on TV. Now, is that a racist moment? Was that racist? What happened? They're saying it's not racist. They're saying it was a mistake, it was an accident, which is true. But why would you pull your gun out on somebody who's been held down to the ground? Was the young black kid shot because, well, he wasn't a kid. 22 year old man, was he shot because he was black? Was he shot because he was resisting arrest? Was he shot because the BART officer was scared? Nobody ever know why he was shot. This man reached for his gun while this person was being held down by two officers, pulled his gun, and shot. That's not racist. That's stupid. Stupid knowing that in today's day and age, everybody has a camera. If you have a phone, odds are 95% of the time that phone has a camera. Big Brother is not only upon us, but Big Brother is manipulating us to a level far surpassed by the movie 1989. So I just want people to think about everything before we start jumping on people's racial issues and drama and all this bullshit. Stress has been created in our lives by the people who came before us. The only way to defeat this is to stop dwelling in the past and reliving it, but to recreate the past to build a better future. You've been tubed.